All right, hi everyone. This is Tanner here, and I am with the boys. We have Mario, Akeem, and Edgar, and we have just seen the Super Mario Bros. movie. Still feels very surreal to say that. Um, all these years and months of hype, we have saw it, and we're gonna do a discussion today. So I guess to start off, I just want to get y'all's general kind of takes on the movie uh mario we'll start with you uh you know the mario movie your mario what was your kind of initial take um uh, my initial so my initial take uh like before i went into the movie i i had um some moderate expectations as you know critics reviews came out and uh uh viewer uh reviews were out um but going after coming in from the movie i just wow all those expectations were exceeded i maybe it's a little bit of bias with my name but uh i just i just love everything about it all the references um there's so much more i could go into in detail right now but i'll save that for later all right sounds good how about you ikeem your kind of general reaction bro my general reaction when uh what watching the first trailer was Okay, this could be a cool, cute movie. You know, get all the Mario references, get a decent movie out of it. I didn't want to watch too much advertisement because I felt like, you know, it's a Mario movie. I kind of, you know, I kind of have a general idea on what I'm going to get. But now it's like after watching the movie, it's like, damn, I just had so much fun with this movie. I don't give a shit about the cliches that it displays. Like, all that's literally forgiven just for the simple novelty of this being a Marvel movie, uh, Mario movie. And it's just like, it was just so damn fun to watch. My expectations were blown out of proportion. Yeah, a lot of people are using the word fun, and then Edgar, what was, what was your general uh, takeaway? Uh, I mean, everyone else has pretty much summed it up. Like, the whole movie from beginning to end, I had the biggest smile on my face. I was smiling the whole time from beginning to end. Uh, all the references in the movie, like Mario said himself, it was crazy. It's surreal to see that this is an actual thing happening. Uh, me personally, I would watch it again for sure. Like, no doubt about it. I could watch this movie a ton more because I know that there's a bunch of references that, although we did catch a good amount of them, I'm sure there's plenty more that we still haven't even noticed at all. Yeah, those were some good takeaways. And then, so kind of diving in, and this will be kind of more of an open discussion, we can just take turns talking, is I want to talk about the voice cast. Uh, starting off with, I think the main highlight is Jack Black has Bowser. I think most people would agree with that. Um, I'll just kind of start, and then we can just kind of go down and, you know, kind of have this this discussion about it. I liked his performance overall. It was very... And by the way, this is going to have spoilers. It was very much like Sunshine and Odyssey. Very kind of cartoony. But I, I didn't mind that. And I thought that he sounded like Bowser. It didn't sound, sound a ton like Jack Black. So I thought he did a really good job, because I was a bit more hesitant about that voice casting than most people were. A lot of people were hype. I was a bit more anxious, but I thought it turned out really well. Um, so yeah, whoever wants to go next can go next. Mario, do you want to go? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I do. Um, I thought that the the voice was... Um, I did. I had a little bit of uh, skepticism as well. You know, uh, Jack Black being very well known, especially for his role in uh, as Poe in Kung Fu Panda. I don't know. I I didn't think I could see him playing a giant, uh, scary lizard compared to playing a middle aged or very young panda guy. Um. So, but I was uh I was blown away honestly because I think Jack Black could definitely pull off kind of like that deep um raspy Bowser voice that that we would all imagine Bowser would have. Um, but yeah, especially in his musical numbers, we saw we saw how, how well his voice could come out, especially in that Peach song, you know. Um, but yeah, I was I thought the voice fit very well for the character. I really enjoyed Jack Black as Bowser. He, I already knew I got a good taste of him just from that first trailer, but man, this dude blew it out the water when you see his performance. 
just playing as Bowser. And especially this version of Bowser, well, I guess you can get a general idea that Bowser is a simp, but maybe because it's just Jack Black, Jack Black playing it so well, it just... It's just so entertaining seeing Jack Black playing that fucking song and it being stuck in my head, the peaches, peaches, but I'll let E take that one when it's his turn to talk because I think he might give a better take on it. But yeah, for Bowser, he, um, I really enjoyed his character. I really love the voice acting. He might be my favorite voice actor in the entire movie, low key. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even like going cap. That's just me, man. All right, E, you turn. You go now. All right. Yeah. Uh, again, what you all said about Bowser. Bowser. Jack Black killed it as Bowser. I didn't have any worries when he was announced as Bowser. The, when they were announcing the whole cast, I knew immediately, okay, yeah, he's going he's gonna to kill it. Like, I've, we've all heard uh, Jack Black sing before, I'm pretty sure, Tenacious D. Um. And he always has that raspy voice and everything. Like, we didn't really hear that with Poe, so that's your only, you know, um, view of Jack Black as a voice actor. Then you won't really expect uh, him to play as Bowser. But um, with how he's done in the past, how he's, like, sung, sang and everything, again, with Peaches, like, that, blasting that song in my car every now and then now, uh, definitely a top 10 song of all time. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, love Peaches. I think we all do. Oh, I gotta say, yeah, damn about Peach. But anyways, before I get off topic, yeah, Bowser yeah. Killed it. Uh, Jack Black killed it. Jack Black killed it. Uh, I don't know if he, I would say he's my favorite performance, but he's definitely up there for this movie. Uh, yeah, that's all I really gotta say about Jack Black as uh, Bowser. Uh, pretty good performance, performance, and I hope that he continues to uh, provide us with an amazing Bowser uh, with hopefully, I'm pretty sure the anticipated sequels that are to come with this uh, franchise. Yeah, one thing I liked about Bowser, because this was my second time, is that he had his goofy moments. The piano was pretty fun, but he was like beating up Mario and like Luigi and crew. Like he had his moments of being really intimidating, and I liked the song. Um, I thought it was very catchy. Um, I liked how like the images of Peach came in and out. I thought that was creative. Um, but yeah, I thought Jack Black just did um, really good in, in the movie, and I think we can all agree. I don't think there's that much else to say. Um, I do want to touch on a subplot here of the whole... Um, the idea of Bowser getting the start to basically um, wanting to marry Peach. They cut that out of the trailers, because in the trailers it seems like he wanted to get it to rule the Mushroom Kingdom. What do y'all think of the whole wedding subplot? I liked it. It reminded me a bit of Odyssey, and I thought it was kind of fun for the movie. Uh, Mario, we're, we'll start with you on that. Uh, yeah, um, I, I really like the uh, the marriage. Uh, I guess subplot. It added a bit of tension to the to the uh, to the plot of the movie, and also I did get to see you know Bowser rock that classic Mario Odyssey wedding suit so that was also a pretty fun uh little easter egg right there um but yeah uh i mean i think i think the wedding scene was pretty good it was a pretty funny and entertaining scene in itself um maybe mm, i think i think it was good i i don't really have much to say about it but yeah i think it was a good addition to this to the plot I'll be honest, I'm glad it didn't go as awkward as I thought. I don't know, like, maybe it's because it's, like, other animated films does do this, but I'm glad that Peach just straight up says, no, you're a, fuck you're a fucking weirdo. Get away from me. <laughs> I don't know. I, it was just kind of refreshing to see that resolve kind of quickly, and then Bowser just using brute force to force Peach to marry him. But, um, but like I said, I like what they did you know with that subplot and you guys are saying they take it they it wasn't shown in the advertisement like i said i only saw one trailer so i just didn't know what was or wasn't uh advertised after that one trailer but either way the the bowser's wedding subplot that was that was handled well i thought it was um i thought it was entertaining for the movie and i think it low-key fits bowser <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, uh, the whole wedding in general, like, it was funny. Then had me laughing. Again, the whole movie itself had me laughing the whole time. Like, this is one of, like, the very rare occurrences where a movie that isn't pure just stupid comedy will make me laugh. And uh, above all that, it's, this was an Illumination film. Like, I know that um, Nintendo was heavily involved because of everything that happened in this movie uh with bowser being a simp you know it's not surprising and like he did this in odyssey like you guys all said uh he had the wedding outfit and it's just really really good all even king babam and king boo showing up as part of the guest um it's really really good and i can't wait to see what else happens like because for sure they are going to make a sequel and bowser escape means definitely going to be a plot I don't know how he would. Maybe someone breaks him free. We'll see what happens when they inevitably inevitably make a sequel to this first film. Yeah, those were all good points. Akeem, I like how you mentioned how about how Peach kind of said no to Bowser right away. Because like in Shrek, um, uh, Fiona's about to marry Lord Farquaad and it kind of is drawn out. So this movie was very well paced. Personally, my favorite casting was Charlie Day's Luigi. I loved this performance. I thought he did the scared very well when he goes to the Dark Lands. That was such a great sequence with the Shy Guys and the Dry Bones. Uh, he does the supportive brother really well. I thought he sounded kind of like Luigi, but still had some really good inflections. Um, I love the line at the end in the final fight when Luigi deflects Bowser's fire with, like, the sewer grate. Um, and he's like, we're stronger together. I think that's a really good line for the Mario series. I love the Luigi. Um, and him being captured, I, th I was fine with it because he's in the beginning of the movie. He does the plumbing stuff. You have some really great scenes of him and Mario. He kind of is leading... Mario and Louis, like he's leading the plumbing company with like the phone calls and stuff and then he has time at the end Maybe I wish I cut back to him maybe once or twice while he was captured Maybe he could try to escape, but I love Luigi. I thought the voice acting was great and they really embodied him and Edgar we'll start with you um, um, If you want to talk about Charlie Day's Luigi and just kind of Luigi as a whole Yeah, man, I agree with you Charlie Day was also my favorite performance in the film. Again, like you said, I think he nailed Luigi in general. Like, I never, I had never heard Charlie Day before at all. I never, I never watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, so I never, I didn't really know about Charlie Day's performances. But the moment I started hearing him more in the trailers, the moment I start, heard him in the movie, I knew like, okay, yeah, he is perfect for Luigi. He's capturing the soul of Luigi well. Uh, again, giving us those great moments uh, when he's captured. And although I do wish that we did get more Luigi, I'm glad with what we were able to get because it's not like they made him useless the whole entire movie. Like Again, like you said, we still saw him doing the plumbing. We saw him in the Mario Bros. Movie commercial. We saw him, you know, helping out Mario at the end. And he even gave us some great moments when he was captured when we got uh, one of the best characters in the movie, uh, the Luma, who is easily up there as, like, one of the best characters in this film. Like, it's funny. SL had me laughing with every single line it said. Uh, yeah, again, Luigi, favorite performance by Charlie Day. Uh, what else can I say except that uh, he did really good in everything for that. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with E on that one. Charlie Day... Did a did a good job of capturing that simultaneous like uh, like like cowardliness of Luigi, but also badass side of Luigi as well. Like it has, it's like a good, it's like a good blend of the two, you know. And with and which the same thing, I never heard of Charlie Day until this movie, and I th like I said, he did a really good, great job of voice acting as Luigi, and I hope he gets more voice acting roles after this. Because I can actually see him voicing a bunch of other characters in future animated projects. But yeah, as for Luigi, he did a great job. Oh uh, yeah, I gotta agree. I I definitely also enjoyed uh, Charlie Day's Luigi. Like everyone else said, I also have not had not heard of him as a voice actor previously. Um, but I did like um, the timid tone that he added to Luigi, you know, as we all know from playing the Luigi's Mansion games, you know, um, 
those games show off Luigi as being very timid. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't be when you're in a man a scary mansion? Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I liked all the special moments with Luigi, especially maybe maybe I'm diving a bit into how his character is, but like I really liked um, especially how he valued um, his brother, his brother's relationship, and yeah. Just Luigi and Charlie Day as Luigi, I thought was a a really good uh, match for this movie. Yeah, I really liked how Mario and Luigi were equal in this movie. A lot of people brought that up. I really like that. They were very much on equal footing. And yeah, I'm glad we're all in agreement. Let's talk about his brother, Chris Pratt as Mario. Um, I really liked him. I He has a lot of lines. And there's only about like maybe four of them where I could maybe hear a bit of Chris Pratt or I was maybe like that's not the best but like 95% of the lines were really good I thought he had kind of that gentleness that Charles Martinet had in his performance there's some lines where I'm like okay there's a bit of that but there's also some lines where he has kind of this courageousness I really love the plot point that's brought up about Mario not giving up I thought that was a really good way with Mario if he's going to keep going. Um, and he sounded like Mario at times when he's on Rainbow Road. And he's like, woohoo! Like, that was awesome. Um, so, yeah, Chris Pratt's Mario I thought was really good. Once he started talking, I was like, oh, dang, this is going to be great. Additionally, Charles Martinet, I liked his cameo as Jumpman or the guy in the arcade. I thought that was fun, and I liked him as Mario's dad. That was cool. So yeah, Chris Pratt, I really liked as Mario. Uh, maybe my third favorite voice. And then Mario, we'll start with you for your thoughts on him. Um, yeah, so uh, Chris Pratt as Mario. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say it was um, bad. Or I'm not going to say it was uh, amazing, amazing. I'll, I'll say it was, it was decent. I thought, uh, it, I thought I, it was a good choice for sure. But um Especially because considering having Charles Martinet talk uh, throughout the whole span of the movie, I could see how it could get a little uh, annoying after a bit with the, a bit of a high pitched voice. So I think in terms of uh, in terms of choosing uh, Chris Pratt over Charles Mart Martinet, I think that was a a, a good move. Um, I I especially liked. Um, uh, how Chris Pratt in the be I don't know if you all noticed, but in the beginning of the movie, he kind of he kind of had that similar Mario voice from the games. I thought that was that was a really good job by him. And um, yeah, I just since this was the main character in the movie, I thought having Chris Pratt as a voice was a a decent pick for sure. Yeah, as for me. Um... It was definitely a weird choice when it was first announced, but after watching the movie, I fall more into the he did decent category. Like like Mario said, he he wasn't amazing, but he wasn't bad either, and he was manageable. And I'm glad they went with the more Brooklyn accent than you know like like Mario said that Italian accent you always hear in the games. It could get a little you know like losing its charm halfway through the movie type shit. And and honestly, I I don't know. I just I enjoyed it, and it could have been a lot worse. Could have been better, but I'm leaning towards the decent side. But it could have been worse, and it wasn't bad. Yeah. Again, uh, Chris Pratt when it first was announced, I laughed my ass off. Like I'm not even lying. Uh, I didn't think he would be able to pull off the Mario voice, and I th I think no one can really. It's just you know. A very staple line to Mario by Charles Martinet. But another thing that everyone, like, the real, like, we all have to consider, like, we don't want to hear Charles Martinet's Mario the whole movie. Like, if you think about it, it would get kind of annoying. Uh, so it's good that they added a different twist on Mario's voice. They gave him the Brooklyn accent. They gave him, you know, uh, just their own way. Chris Pratt uh, gave him a voice that... Uh, will be memorable, maybe. Like, we'll definitely be hearing him a lot more with the sequels. Because uh, after that post credit, how much the movie is making, like, I'm not surprised. None of us would really be surprised if the movie gets a sequel. I will say that I love the chemistry between uh, Chris Pratt and Charlie Day as Mario and Luigi. I think they work so well because not only 
how they're doing good performances, but they've also worked together before in like the Lego movie. So they've had that voice acting connection before. They've worked together before. And in this movie, playing as brothers, um, I think it worked really well. Like, they gave us the heartfelt moments with Mario and Luigi. They show us their past, their backstory, all that stuff. And it's always, like, like Tanner said earlier, they always showed, even as babies, that Mario was the type to never give up and always keep, keep fighting and everything, while Luigi was also always a timid one, scared, could never defend himself. And it just works really well as a brother dynamic. Uh, to all the people out there saying uh, that uh, their brothers just felt fucking forced, uh, you're fucking stupid. Uh, they're fucking brothers. So, yeah. Yeah, those are really good points. I really like the Mario and Luigi dynamic. Um, speaking of the Lego movie, I actually rewatched it this past week. You know, Chris Pratt is the main star on that, and hearing his voice in the Lego movie and Mario movie was definitely different, so I was impressed. Um, all right, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I liked it. I really don't have a ton of takeaways. He was funny. I liked the Mario and Donkey Kong rivalry. I thought that was cool. Kind of keep that from the games, you know, the Mario vs. DK series. I thought it was fun. I felt like his voice could have been a bit more, maybe, like, gruffer, but I don't know. I still liked it. I had fun. Edgar, I know you were really excited about, um... Seth Rogen as DK, so you can go ahead and start us off with him. Man, listen, from the moment the DK segment uh, was about to begin, I already knew, man. I knew I was going to have a blast with Donkey Kong and everything. And I will say that I'm a huge Seth Rogen fan. I love his work. Even if he does use his voice whenever he acts, it, uh, acts uh, every single time he has a chance to add the voice, I will always love that. Not the voice, uh, the laugh. The laugh is what always gets me. Um, I loved how he portrayed Donkey Kong. I won't say that it was perfect. I, I enjoyed it, but I know that there was so much more, like you said, that could have been better. He could have, I know what you mean when you say that he could have been more rougher with the voice, like add more, more grit to it, more rougher, not raspy, but like just more toughness to it, I guess you could say. And that whole segment in the movie was... Uh, uh, probably one of my favorites uh from the uh riding in the cart uh to get to the stadium to you know donkey kong and mario having their battle uh to donkey kong's you know just comebacks up comebacks just uh you know going up against mario just talking back to mario like that rivalry was just amazing and the fact that they made you think that oh they're having a heartfelt moment about their dads and then donkey kong you know just fucking completely throws that away and it's just like yeah, well, he's right about it, you know, like, that was funny as hell to me. Uh, big shout-out, because, fucking Christ, I can't believe that they actually added the DK rap, uh, and I will always be hyped to that, and uh, I'm glad that in that whole Donkey Kong area, like, the country and all that, um, they uh, made a little cameo for uh, Diddy and Dixie, and I, for I can always forget the other monkey's name, but he was also in Donkey Kong Country 64, I will say, since we're on the topic of the Donkey Kong and Seth Rogen, that the one voice that I really didn't like enjoy in this movie that got kind of annoying to me was Cranky Kong's. I don't know why. It just like wasn't crazy good to me. It felt, felt kind of annoying to me. I don't know what it is about it. I just couldn't stand it that well. But that doesn't take away from the whole movie. Again, I was still smiling from the whole time. It was a really good movie. And the whole segment, I loved I think for me, um, I'm sticking with the analogy I said after the movie was over. What I like about what they did with Donkey Kong in this movie is that the dialogue bits that they gave him, this is exactly how I think Donkey Kong would be like if he spoke words, just considering his personalities in the game. Like, you know, he's a showboat, but he, you know, he loves, he loves his, uh, his people, his gorillas, his monkeys, and, you know, and I really like that Diddy Kong cameo. That was a really good cameo. And and I don't know. I just really like what they did with Donkey Kong's character in this movie. Just I just I just had a lot of fun with the character. I don't really have too many takeaways other than I think this would this would be uh, Donkey Kong's choice of words based off his personality of the games. And I think they did a fun job with his character in that regard. 
Um, yeah, I agree. I think, uh, uh, I think Seth Rogen did a good job as Donkey Kong, and, um, yeah, like, like I keep mentioned, it, it does seem like it would be somewhat of the type of voice Donkey Kong would have based on his personality. Um, first thing that probably comes to mind is, like, his smash taunt, it, with one of his taunts is, like, literally Donkey Kong shrugging, um, uh, with a goofy face, so I think, I think the voice could, uh, could match his personality, and also Seth Rowan could, um, uh, turn into a serious tone uh for example when they they were fighting and mario and donkey kong were fighting and seth rogan basically said now you die i thought i thought you know that was a good example of how seth rogan could still be that goofy but also could um get that serious tone of donkey kong right so yeah i think he did a good job as donkey kong for sure yeah um those were good points since we're talking about the dk segment um I really liked the fight. I thought the fight was a lot of fun. I love seeing the cat suit, and I like how fast Mario was with it. I was like, damn, like, whoa, that was really cool. The mini mushroom joke was fun. The action, I think, is really good in this movie. I do wish maybe in the fight we saw a bit of, like, the animals Donkey Kong has used throughout his adventures. Like, I think R- Rambi the Rhino or, like, the snake. Like, that would have been cool, but that's something for a sequel. Um, while we're on the topic of Donkey Kong, shortly after that segment, um, we get Mario Kart, which I think is a highlight for many, I think, us included. I love that. I love when Mario and crew go off the ramp, they land on Rainbow Road, and Mario says, Wahoo! Such a great scene. I like how they really embrace the epicness of that moment. And I love the action. I like how the camera kind of follows Mario. You see what he does. He gets blown up, then he goes on a different platform, and then the camera's still tracking Mario. Goes to Peach, goes to Toad. Really great action, and I like how they filmed it, because it could have just been like, here's the Mario Kart sequence, have fun, but they had a lot of really cool different camera angles, and I really liked it. I think it could have maybe been a bit longer, but it was great. Love the Blue Shell reference, just the filmmaking, that was really good. Uh, Mario, what do you think of the Mario Kart sequence? Um, I thought it was awesome. There was a lot of attention to detail in that sequence. I don't know if you guys noticed when they were drifting. You could also kind of hear that um, that Rainbow Road sound uh, sound effect when you're uh, when you're driving on Rainbow Road. That little like sparkly. Uh, I, I guess that's the best way I could put it. Um, sound effect and just there's just so many little things in that scene. It's like like you mentioned, Tanner, the big one of course was the was the blue shell of course, and. Um, there's also like like I mentioned little things like you could also tell when Mario was going to take that shortcut um as soon as he was going to take that shortcut he drifted and he gained a boost from that there's there's just so many amazing little things in that movie and I mean in that scene and um yeah it was a very I like the tone of it it was very epic I guess high stakes you know as Mario was getting chased by the uh leader of I guess the Koopa army the blue shell uh, Koopa, and um, yeah, there was also a lot of, uh, of course, items from the Mario Kart games. Uh, you saw, obviously, of course, the bananas and the shells. Um, so yeah, that that scene alone was mm, probably one of my favorites in the whole movie for sure. I think for me, that probably was my favorite part of the movie. Second favorite part of the movie being the uh, end game battle with uh, Mario and Donkey Kong. Uh, saving Peach and the Kongs. So with the whole Mario Kart uh, scene, like you said, they could have just been like really static with the cinematography, but nah, they actually play around with the camera. You actually see them, you know, like throw, throwing items, using items, and just having a whole bunch of fun animating that scene. And they just did a lot more. They did a lot more than I thought that they were going to do with the Mario Kart Rainbow Road scene, because honestly, I thought this was going to be the end game of the movie for some reason, but I'm kind of glad it wasn't, and there was a lot more movie left afterwards, and, um, and I think, I think that's really all I have to say about it, it was just, it was just a really fun scene, if I could end it off before it's Edgar's turn, Peach on a bike, yeah! Yeah, man, uh, if y'all haven't seen the movie, for those who haven't seen the movie, just know that you're prepared to see Peach on that damn bike, because out loud, no hesitation, in the theater, I saw that, and I went, damn. Akeem was next to me, heard that shit happen, 
Um, but yeah, about the whole Rainbow Road segment, uh, I loved it. It was very colorful, obviously, like a rainbow, like they were on the fucking rainbow. Uh, again, like Mario stated, they had a shit ton of items referenced to the um, the games from, you know, the, sh- the shells, the blue shell, the, the bombs was even a, an item held by one of the Koopas. And I also want to say that I loved how the car making, like how they built the cars and everything. Because they uh, basically do it the same way as in Mario Kart 8, you know, like you have to go up and down to each, like from the kart body to the wheel to the glider. And then what was funny is that they even had an A button at the end of when they were finished building their cars. Like they're all done. Oh, hey, okay, just hit the A button. And again, we get like their signature uh, vehicles that we see on promotional art for all Mario Kart. Mario gets his regular red card with the logo on it. Everyone gets their card except freaking Toad, who got a fucking monster, like, big-ass truck and pulled up on that shit like a pimp, dude. Like, this motherfucker was ready to destroy shit with his, with his fucking truck. I do love the fact that the Kong Army was also involved, and it's kind of interesting seeing how they're the ones that build the cards. Like, it's not just someone else in the Mushroom Kingdom or something like that. It's the, it's the Kongs that have all the technology and shit to build these damn cars. I don't know how, but, you know, like, good for them, man. Like, I want to see more Donkey Kong spinoffs in the future. I can't wait to see more, uh, because it's for sure going to happen eventually. Yeah, I'll love a DK show. One small complaint I do have about the Rainbow Road scene, this is, like, small as that. Rainbow Road in the games, like, the stages look really cool because you have, like, these, like, giant stars and, like, icons of the characters. That would have been cool to have here, although it, uh, a bit hard. One, I do love the cart customization scene. I'm glad you brought that up, Edgar. I also love, love how they had the theme of the cart customization in it, like, the menu customization music. That was so cool and really just, like, wow. And that'll bring me to my next point. What was y'all's favorite piece of... Um, a musical song from the Mario games in the movie. Um, I loved when they enter in the Mushroom Kingdom and hear all the different themes. That was awesome. You get stuff from Odyssey, 64, Super Mario Bros. 3, the original, a bit of a Mario Galaxy beat in there. That and probably the Airship Attack remix. Awesome. Those were probably my favorite uses of the Mario score in the movie, but the score was fantastic. The music in this movie was so great. So, uh, Mario, what was your favorite use of a Mario theme in the movie? Um, uh, probably mine would have to be the, maybe it's just me, I don't know, I just like the, the sound of the, um, level complete, uh, uh, version, and also, I don't know, I think, also the one that you mentioned, I don't know if it's the same one, but the one where he barely enters, like, the, that Toad City um type of area yeah i definitely like that one i'm not the best with music so so um i guess that's the best way i could describe it (laughs) for me for me my favorite piece of music was definitely the movie's version of starman like right at the end i don't know i just really really love that orchestra version of starman utilized for the ending scene of this movie i just had so much fun no, knowing that the scene was coming up, seeing the star, and then Luigi, like you said, Luigi blocking the fire with the shield, and they say, uh, "Well, you know, I might be wrong, but you know, let's do this together. We can, we're stronger together." And then you get the star, and it's like, "Oh boy, the star music's coming. Let's see how they use it." And I was not disappointed one bit. So, hands down, that's my favorite piece of music utilized in this movie. Yeah, again, the score for this film is amazing, like Tanner said. Um, my favorite, though, like, there's so many to choose from, and, like, if I had to choose specifically, it's going to be difficult as hell. But I think I really love just anything that had to do with Bowser. Because they, they killed it with, like, again, like, the airship theme from, like, Super Mario Bros. 3. A lot of Super Mario Brothers 3 music in this film. And again, like for those who don't know, I grew up with the Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. And the one we always usually played was 3. So to hear all this different music, all these power-ups from 3, and all these sound effects, it's just it just hit my nostalgia 
like, hard. But I will say that, although we get a bunch of song- music from Mario games and remix versions of edited and all that, uh, they also included a lot of 80s music in this film. However, the one thing that people may not know is that they originally were going to have Donkey Kong Country um, inspired music from like the original DK Country uh, opening theme. Uh, and they replaced it with Take On Me. That kind of disappointed me because I was ready to just hear remixed versions of the Donkey Kong Country themes. But other than that, like the whole score is amazing. And I suggest you all uh, take a look at it and listen to it on Spotify because it, it, it's really good and it brings a lot of nostalgia from all the Mario games. Yeah, those were all great points. Um, that is disappointing to cut out the Donkey Kong Country thing, but kind of oh well. I, I do want to touch on a point Akeem said about the Starman theme at the end. And can I talk about Brooklyn because I kind of like the Brooklyn scenes. Um, I thought in the beginning it was a great way to establish more on Luigi. I love when they have to go to the plumbing job. It looks like the 2D games. That was just perfect. I even thought the whole little subplot of the dog. Yes, very illumination, but it was fun. It was fun, and I don't know. It was cool to see Mario and Luigi interacting with, like, a dog in real life and, like, with people. Um, and I do like when they go there at the end. I thought that was something that maybe could have happened. I like that. It was kind of cool to see Mario and Luigi defend their hometown together. I really like that. Because I'm like, how are they going to end this? Are they going to do it in, like, Bowser's Castle? Well, we've seen that in a million games. Oh, we're going to Brooklyn? It was really fun, and I like that. I do wish Mario and Luigi's family was more fleshed out. I remember thinking about that we might get their family, and that we got them, and they were just, like, kind of just fine. I think that's definitely more for a sequel, something to flesh out. But I like the Brooklyn stuff. I thought it was fun in the beginning and really... Uh, cool at the end for a final set piece. Um, how about you, Mario? Where do you stand on that? Um, I thought the Brooklyn, uh, adi- the addition of the Brooklyn seeds was very good. Um, kind of adds a bit more depth to a, to Mario as a character because in the games, you know, we know he's from Brooklyn, but of course we don't, we don't really uh, know about it, uh, his Brooklyn backstory and how he was a plumber. It's just something that we see like on the game manuals or something like that before the movie uh even came out um but yeah i liked um that it fleshed out his i guess mario's roots and also we got a bit of an introduction like you mentioned tanner to his family um it gives the character more depth and um yeah i also thought the the brooklyn uh fighting scene at the end was definitely uh really good uh I didn't expect, I honestly thought it was a surprise. I, I didn't expect uh, the Mushroom King to even come to Brooklyn. I thought I thought the Mushroom Kingdom itself would just be its one known place that would be separated from Brooklyn. But uh, the merger between the two was definitely a surprise. It was a great ending to the plot of the story. Yeah, like they, like Tanner said, I think the the use of Mario and Luigi's family was just fine just to get the plot moving and um, nothing else too much to talk about them. You know, they exist. They uh, can be a little hard on Mario and Luigi. I think it's just the dad, but I, I think all the rest are fine. I, I promise you like two of those family members didn't have a single line though. But, um, and as for like, like you said, the end game at Brooklyn, it was nice that they, um, trying to kind of change the formula and not go to like Bowser's castle as a finale, which maybe it's just me, but heck, even the original movie kind of went back and forth with uh, Brooklyn and going back to the mushroom kingdom. So maybe they took a look at the original movie, took inspiration from it and then said, how can we do that? But make it better type deal. At least that's my interpretation of it. So if that was the case, then that was a good use of trying to fix what the original movie didn't do all that great with. Yeah, I will say the whole Brooklyn was great. I think it gave us a lot more backstory on Mario and Luigi, how they grew up, what they originally were doing. We get um, a view at their old boss, Bike, which is a reference to Wrecking Crew, uh, an older game before the Mario Brothers games, I, I believe. 
And I want to say that, you know, Mario and Luigi, they go out, start their own plumbing company. Uh, we're greeted uh, to Mario and Luigi with the Mario Brothers Super Show rap that everyone has seen with that trailer. Uh, it was a nice thing uh, to uh, get, a, get treated with. Uh, a great way to introduce the Mario Brothers into the film. I was, and I also love the fact that um, when they get their first gig, their first job, we see that uh, Mario is, you know, he's very parkour-like. He is very energetic. You can tell he loves doing what he does. And then Luigi, like, he just following Mario around. He's tired by the time that he gets to the exit. And that whole first segment, when they start doing that parkour and everything, is a reference to the uh, first Mario game, World 1-1. Those uh, brown boxes and yellow uh, cans of paint are a reference to where the blocks are all placed in the original game. And then there's some boxes stacked up later that reference the pipes. I thought that was a really neat detail. And it just made me love the movie even more with how much care and time they put into it to make sure that they gave us all a treat. And then the final fight was amazing. You know, they wanted to save Brooklyn uh, from the beginning uh, because the movie originally started off with a giant leak flooding the streets. And that's how they ended up, you know, getting to the Mushroom Kingdom and Luigi ended up getting to the Darklands. Uh, I just thought the whole Brooklyn segment was good. We see Charles Martinet again talk, talking as Mario's dad. He's not very uh, proud of his son. And then the way that that all fixes at the end was pretty nice. And everything about the movie and the Brooklyn scenes was very entertaining. I hope that uh, they did leave the movie at the end with like making us wonder, like, so are they going back and forth with Brooklyn and the Mushroom Kingdom? Or are they permanent residents of Mushroom Kingdom. I'm assuming they're permanent residents of the Mushroom Kingdom now because uh, they have their own room and everything in the Mushroom Kingdom. So I think it's safe to say that in the future films, we'll be focusing probably more on the Mushroom Kingdom and other worlds in that universe instead of just Brooklyn. But the Brooklyn stuff was good from beginning to end. Yeah, um, I, I agree with all of that. Speaking of the Mushroom Kingdom, that's the next point. So, th this is kind of one of my major flaws with the movies. We do, but don't explore. I love when Mario enters, he looks around, he meets Toad. By the way, Keegan-Michael Key was perfect as Toad. He was cute in the right ways. He wasn't annoying at all. All the Toads, I thought, were really good. I w was worried that they were going to be the minions of this movie. They were not. Toads were great. Um, you know, so when Mario meets Toad, great scene. We see some brambles, um, some of the bug enemies from 3D land. I'm forgetting the name. That was really cool. Uh, they meet Peach. I thought Anya Taylor Joy was pretty good as Peach. I like the training sequence. I'm like, okay, I'm liking this. And then they montage basically kind of through their journey to the Kong kingdom. And that was very disappointing. I'm like, oh, that's Bomb on Battlefield. All right. That was only two seconds, one to the next. Alrighty, we're in the desert area from Odyssey 1 to the next. And I wanted to see more, not just because of the Easter eggs, but because I think it would have been a great way to really flush out Mario's relationship with Peach and Toad and to have Mario react to everything. I think maybe like a little like minute sequence in each, or maybe they're in Bomb on Battlefield and they have to avoid like a loose chain chomp or something. And I, I don't know, or something like that to just give a bit more conflict and to flesh out a bit more of the friendships, I think would have been greater. Um, I love the scene in the Fire Flower field. I thought that was really well paced. Very nice scene. Had kind of that galaxy feel to it of exploring a backstory of a character. So overall, I like the Mushroom Kingdom parts a lot. I love the end fight. That was awesome. That was really great. Seeing DK and Mario team up. But I thought we could have explored a bit more. That's something they should definitely improve with a sequel. And uh, Edgar, we'll start with your thoughts on the Mushroom Kingdom. Okay, yeah. From the moment we get to the Mushroom Kingdom, we see, you know, we hear the theme play. We hear uh, just Mario adoring the sights of it. We see some of the, in the games, they're enemies, but here they seemed really harmless. I do not know what they are called. But there was a little, like, insect-looking things that are different colors with the two big eyes. And then, oh, it was just good references. There was a lot of, you know, 
enemies in the games, but they're very pacifist in the movie. Um, for example, some cheap cheeps are pets in this movie. And from the moment, again, when you get to the Mushroom Kingdom, we see Mario walking around, and then the theme in the background playing is from Super Mario Bros. 3. Again, very nostalgic for me. The whole setting of the Mushroom Kingdom was very colorful and vibrant. That's something I really loved. You know, we see all the different colored toads. Again, like Tanner mentioned, uh, King and Michael Key as t- co- Toad is, like, funny. He's hilarious. We know, based on the theme that plays when he is introduced, that that Toad is Captain Toad. And that's a good thing to know because usually they'd be replacing random Toads and everything. Uh, what I want to point out is that I think at least this was my speculation that the two toads that were guarding the front doors, uh, I have a feeling those are the yellow and blue toads from the New Super Mario Bros. Wii games, because that's the only time we've ever played as characters that weren't, you know, like Wario, Wild Legion or anything. That's the missed opportunity from the game. Like, but they gave us, you know, a blue toad and a yellow toad. And that's something I noticed right off the bat. I'm like, wait, that's, that's the blue toad and the yellow toad guarding the door. Uh, I will agree with Tanner on the different kingdoms that or worlds that weren't explored as much. Again, I think they could have fleshed it out a little bit more. If the movie was, I say, at least like 15 to 20 minutes longer, I feel like they could have added more of a fleshed out uh, chemistry between Mario and Peach. And that's just something that I really enjoyed from the movie. That's pretty much it. I, I just really love the design and I guess the rendering and detail of the Mushroom Kingdom. It just looks really nice and vibrant. Like for me, I think, you know, may like I said earlier, this may be a bias because it is a Mario movie, but I think this might be Illumination's best looking movie. And I really love the like I said, I really love the look of Mushroom King of the Mushroom Kingdom. And you mi- so wait, uh, Tanner, if you mind unmuting for a sec, did you mention um, you? So you mentioned like that montage in the middle, and um, and how you felt like it went a little too quick. You said that, right? Yeah, I did. They they really kind of blew through it. So I I think for me, I think for me why it didn't bother me so much is because maybe because it was like a quantity over quality thing it's like maybe they did plan like an extra 10 or 15 minutes in those worlds but um they just had to just maybe cut out a few scenes in other areas so we could get to the other fun stuff but that's just more of a that's just more of a guess than something that you know like something i can prove is factual but that's just me though but so maybe that's why it didn't bother me all too much but then you also mentioned that you felt like like the world of the Mushroom Kingdom could have been a little bit more explored. Yeah, not really a Mushroom Kingdom per se, I guess. Well, maybe more like the functions of like, like when we saw the Toads discussing, maybe a bit more of how things work, but it was more the montage I was kind of referring to. Okay, okay. I thought like maybe you meant like, uh, just like, like what makes the Mushroom Kingdom special type deal. <laughs> So if it was just the montage, I was just I was just asking to clear that up, but yeah, like I said, I really love the just the look of this movie. It, it's very vibrant, very colorful. I love what they did with all the details, and this is a very detailed movie. It, it just looks amazing. Uh, Mario's and Peach's chemistry, which I don't want to get into too much detail right now, if that's a topic later. Um, I think they handled it pretty good. Um, I don't, I don't think it could, it could have maybe had like a few extra minutes, but what they did in this movie was, uh, was actually pretty fine on its own. Um, yeah. Um, the Mushroom Kingdom, I thought was definitely one of the better, one of the best looking, uh, scenes in the movie. Um, I'm I'm just looking at some of the promotional stuff. I mean, you have the antique shop with all the little details on the different little items that are found in Mario games, like the P Switch and things like that. And um, you can even notice with the vast amount of different toads in the in the in the setting. I don't know. It's just it just it's just crazy that animation has gotten this far that 
that we can animate so many different uh, entities in one setting. And also I'm looking at the promotional art and I think like the amount of pipes, as we saw, there was a scene in the movie where Mario was getting uh, lost with the different amount of pipes that were found in the Mushroom Kingdom. I thought that also helped to add uh, helped to add to the scenery of the whole place. And of course, um, all, all the different giant mushrooms as well, and um, like, and also the floating islands as well. There's there's just so much in that um, in that one area that you can look at and just uh, be in awe in. And like you mentioned, Tanner, uh, I definitely would have. I definitely agree that I think um, having the montage more expanded and expanding in discovering more about these different worlds that they pass by, like the Sand Kingdom and um, Baba Maddle Field. I think that would have been better. It would have definitely helped given the Mushroom Kingdom more depth and, you know, make this a more bigger, helped make this a bigger universe, I guess, in terms of the Mushroom Kingdom. But um, yeah, I definitely think it was one of the best looking areas in the movie. Yeah, those are all great points. I love the color and detail of the movie. I've mentioned that like a lot when I was like doing analysis leading up for the movie. Such a great part of it. Awesome animation. This has overall been a very positive discussion, but I do want to turn and discuss. Did y'all have any flaws or thing that's, things that could have been better? One thing that I think could have been better was just characters kind of meet each other. They say what they need to say and then they move on, which isn't bad. I would have liked them to kind of explore things about one another in terms of their backstories and stuff. Like when Mario runs into Peach, she's like, where are you from? He's like, oh, I was with my brother. He's lost. And she's like, oh, you got to go save him. Go train. I'm like, okay, cool. It was very efficient, very fun movie with the pacing. But I wish there could have been a bit more lines um, about characters kind of, you know, interacting like, when Mario, Peach, and Toad are about to leave for their adventure, Toad's like, we're best friends, and Mario's like, are we? I wish we got, like, Mario kind of just seemed annoyed with Toad. I wish we got maybe some more scenes of Mario and Toad, of Mario showing more of that annoyance. Like, I just felt like in the movie, we could have gotten a bit more of kind of some dialogue between characters. It seems like a lot of the characters in the movie, they talked with having a goal in mind, which I totally get. But I think what makes great movies great is the interaction and characters, the dialogue feeling natural. And that's just something I would have liked to have seen a bit more of. Uh, Mario, did you have any issues with the movie? I don't know if issues, but I guess flaws is a, a good word for it. Um, yeah, I guess um, maybe I guess uh, it's not the biggest gripe because I think it's a Mario movie at the end of the day. Um it's not supposed to be something like, I don't know, like the greatest masterpiece of all time in terms of movie. But, um, you know, because people are going to watch the Mario movie for, you know, seeing the different references and just uh, the, uh, seeing their favorite plumber come to life in a, in the big screen. Um, but, yeah, I guess the story could have been a bit more deepened and and the characters as well if. If they if they wanted to improve on something for the next movie, um, like you said, yeah, um, like for example, one thing that comes to mind is like uh, Peach already knows about Bowser. Um, why is that? Is there a certain history as to how Peach knows about Bowser's existence? Um, there's a lot of things that um, aren't really uh, touched on in terms of uh, backstory in ter- in the movie, and. Um, in terms of story wise, yeah, like we mentioned before, the montage could have been expanded. Um or and also the family. So there's there's just a lot of things that the movie could have uh gone into detail, like maybe like why why did they um go into plumbing, I guess. You know, it doesn't have to be too detailed, but maybe just give a little bit of info or a backstory as to why things happened. But yeah. So so I think maybe for me, if the, it's, let's say, again, this is very unlikely because, you know, but let's just say you didn't know who Mario was and you decided to watch this movie. Um, like, like Tanner said, some characters just 
kind of meet and just kind of meet and greet and then you know go on with their day like maybe like you like you said Tanner Mario if Mario showed like that bit of annoyance throughout the movie or you know like maybe have the conversations feel more like more natural like the dialogue feel like the characters are talking amongst each other because any you know anybody who is going to watch this movie the people who made the movie know that they're Mario fans watching it with that in mind so like you know it's like you know peach you know we know peach you know peach we all know how this is going to go down etc let's move on so i say again very unlikely if you're just not a mario fan or just never grew up with it then i could totally see that being a valid criticism on how like some characters just meet and move on and they just kind of deal with it because you're kind of like out of the loop so i i guess really the one flaw is that it's not it's not a hundred percent accessible to everyone. Um, if they wanted to just flesh out the characters and story a little bit more to make it more universal, uh, no pun intended, but, uh, I think they could have just made it feel a lot more natural instead of it feeling just like a tiny bit rushed. Yeah. Everyone has made like the same points I've been thinking. I do feel like the movie, I wish it could have been a little bit longer, then it probably would have given us more moments with the characters. Uh, nothing, like, again, the same stuff bothered me. Also, one thing that kind of bothered me is that although Mario and Luigi are already brothers and everything, like, we know this, uh, it felt kind of weird seeing that the heartfelt quote-unquote moment was between Mario and Donkey Kong. But I know it wasn't really that crazy of heartfelt, but, you know, they were both talking about their dads and how they're both not proud of them and then you know Donkey Kong follows it up with a joke but um again same with Bowser like all that really is driving Bowser crazy and angry is Mario's just you know there with Peach and because Bowser is a simp that he is it's like he's a fucking you know he gets angry at that uh he wants revenge he wants you know to destroy Mario just cause he's taking his put away from him you know but again like yeah, you all have been saying they barely introduced the characters between each other. They rush. I feel like they're rushing it just to get the story out of the way. But again, you don't expect story in a Mario movie. Uh, it's Mar. It's Mario. Like it's not supposed to be some deep, you know, logicals at anything. It's a Mario movie. What do you expect? You expect just Mario and all the characters, you know, being who they are, with a little bit of different stuff added to it. Again, like, we don't really ever, for example, we don't ever see the Lumas talk in the games. They added personality to the Lumas and to the Luma in this movie. A dark personality, but, you know, they added something to it. Um, but, yeah, uh, characters wish I could, they could have had more interaction uh, instead of just, oh, yeah. Like, again, with Mario and Toad, like, Toad's like, yeah, my best friend. And then, like Tanner said, Mario just got annoyed from that. But we never really saw a growth between the both of them as characters they just you know stuck with that even though we don't really see mario being annoyed at toad in the rest of the film they make you want to think like oh yeah sure they fit they figured it out uh during the montage or something like we don't know we don't see the development between these characters throughout the film but that's okay you know we all know the characters from the video games and it, this movie is just about having fun for like we're not supposed to take it deeply. We're not supposed to, like, get deep into it, the story, lore, and everything. Like, we're just here for the fun, the nostalgia, and the references, and just to have a good time. Like, if you're getting upset at a fucking Mario movie, like, you're just sad. You you're you didn't have a childhood, basically. Yeah, speaking of references, um, next topic is what was everyone's favorite reference? For me... There's kind of a couple that stand out. Um, in particular, I love seeing King Boo. Growing up, I love King Boo. That was really cool. Second one is, this is going to sound really nerdy, but it's when Bowser is doing the proposed kind of idea brainstorming to Kamek. And Kamek is dressed up as Peach. Uh, that was a reference to New Super Mario Bros. We have the end where Kamek is disguised up as Peach to fake Mario. As someone who grew up with New Super Mario Bros. Wii, that was really cool. By the way, Kamek... Pitch perfect in this movie. I can't believe that was Kevin Michael Richardson. Like, wow. So that was really cool. Um, I think seeing a lot of the items, too. Like, the ice flower was great. The tanuki leaf was really cool. 
So for me, um, I grew up really loving the bosses. So it's like, so like King, Sing King Boo, King Bomb Bomb, Kamek were great. And then the power-ups, I think kind of those were my favorite references in, in the movie. Um, what about you, Mario? Uh, yeah, so in terms of my favorite references, um, there's two games that usually, or two or three games that usually stick out to me. That's uh, Super Mario 64. Mario Odyssey and Super Mario 3D World, just because I've spent a lot of time with those games in particular. So, um, the first big reference that I enjoyed was probably uh, King Babam. King Babam's appearance at um, Bowser's wedding. That one was really cool, um, just because it's, of course, the first boss in Mario 64. I just so I've I've definitely dealt with uh beating that boss a lot in my childhood and also another reference i liked was of course the cat power up i didn't i i didn't expect that first before i saw the trailer um that we would get much of super mario 3d world um since i guess that isn't considered uh as one of the the best games in the series um and also another uh reference that i enjoyed was of course the sand kingdom of course and the final big one that I liked was, of course, when Mario was beating up Bowser. He was doing the spin throw that he does in Mario 64. So that, those ones were definitely standouts to me. So for me, um, this may be just because I've been playing the game a lot, but uh, did, did y'all catch the, uh, the punch out reference like a after the commercial played at the beginning? Because... I don't know. I, I was just really excited to see, like, just a Punch-Out reference right off the bat. And I was like, wow, there's going to be hella references in this movie. And then, of course, I like the Jumpman, since that was uh, Mario's original name. And then the guy playing at the arcade, who was uh, voiced by uh, Charles. And it was like, it was like, I knew I had to watch this movie on repeat, because I, st I still think I missed a lot of shit <laughs> watching it on a first viewing. And to see the pikmin reference i really enjoy or easter egg i guess and and the drifting the drifting on the mario kart that i really love that they included that on the rainbow road scene i was just like as soon as i saw those sparks i was like yep yep they know what they're doing <laughs> it's great i love i love all of the references they're making right now and it was just having so much fun so yeah for me the standout ones the at least ones i could catch on a first viewing were Punch out, jump man, pick man, drifting. So yeah, I, I enjoyed what I could find so far. I know there was more that I could find, but just right off the top of my head, those are the ones that I guess stood out to me. Man, thinking about the references, like I think one of my it was very uh minimal, but just seeing Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, and again I don't know Chunky Kong. Uh, just like made me really happy. I didn't really grow up with the Donkey Kong 64 game, but I did play a lot of the Donkey Kong Country. And again, Donkey Kong is the one I was excited for the most. Definitely one of my favorite cameos, last references. I also loved the Luigi's uh, ringtone being, you know, the GameCube opening up sequence. Like that brought back so many memories to me. And just the amount of references in this movie is like a love letter to anyone who's a fan of the Mario games from Bowser's wedding suit to, you know, the cap power, all the power ups, including the mini mushroom, which I didn't think we were going to get the fucking mini mushroom in this movie, but it was really funny and added some more comedic moments uh, to the, the DK versus Mario fight. We even got Pauline in this movie at the beginning of the movie during the um, flood at Brooklyn. I think uh, she was on the news, you know, announcing the flood and another one of my favorites is easily the mario playing on the, on the nintendo entertainment system the nes he was playing kid icarus which was very um very interesting to say because that means you know like the nintendo is the game system in his universe but he's also based on a nintendo game so it's it's, it's kind of weird but it's kind of funny too i know they did it for the references and again the power-ups the Mario Kart items. Uh, I don't think we got a Mario Party reference. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we did get any reference to Mario Party. Maybe we did, and none of us caught it, but uh, I'm, again, I'm going to have to watch the movie again to see if I can find any references towards that. Yeah, I don't think we got Mario Party. That's a bummer. Um, that's something for a sequel. Speaking of which, 
Next point is, what will y'all want to see in a sequel? So, I think, you know, this movie teases Yoshi. To be honest, cool post-credit tease. I don't think Yoshi's going to be a big part in the next movie. I think he'll kind of be like the pet kind of Mario and Luigi have. Some cute moments. I don't think he'll be a big moment. I think the movie's going to really focus on the family dynamic. What I would like to see is maybe Wario and Waluigi are actually Mario's and Luigi's cousins, like the sons of like Mario's uncle, and maybe Wario and Luigi come to live with Mario and Luigi in Brooklyn. They get into a bunch of antics. Wario and Luigi find out about the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario and Luigi don't want them there because they always mess up stuff, and the four of them have to get along. And then you have Bowser Jr. trying to break out Bowser, and maybe you have a plotline of Bowser's like disappointing Bowser Jr. And Bowser Jr. trying to win his approval. Maybe you could have the Koopalings in there. There's a lot of really fun areas. I know a lot of us want Wario and Waluigi. I think it could be done really well um, with the family dynamic. When I always think about animated sequels, I think about Shrek 2. Where Shrek 2 had the family dynamic. And that was really well done. And I think if you really had a Wario, Waluigi, Mario, Luigi kind of dynamic about them not getting along, learning to get along... That would be really cool. I would really like to see that. Go to different lands, go to different areas. But I think what this movie did so well as a whole was taking elements we love from the game and having emotional moments with them. And that I think you could do a lot with Wario and Waluigi. I think Mario Party references would make sense for that. I think that would be really cool. Uh, maybe you could go to Isle Delfino. We didn't have a ton of Sunshine references in here. Um... This movie was more like the big games, like Odyssey, Super Mario Bros. 3, um, Mario Kart, I think, seeing more of the sunshine, maybe going to the land of Super Mario Bros. 2 of Wart, stuff like that, getting into a bit more of the weird I would uh, really love. So, Mario, what is what do you want to see for the sequel? Um, in terms of a sequel, I don't know if I have too much. That uh, Obviously, there's, a, there's the obvious. Uh... Of course, I'd want to see uh, Wario and Waluigi incorporated somehow into the plot of the sequel. Um, Yoshi, he could, depending on how you play the plot, he, he, he could have a somewhat of a significant role. Maybe, maybe, I mean, I wouldn't want to say that he gets kidnapped again, because I, I feel like that might be overplayed if we have a sequel. Um, but... Maybe somehow they could make Yoshi a, an integral part of the story. Maybe um, he's he's the last endangered uh, Yoshi species or something, you know, based on color. They could do something with it for sure. Um, but I would definitely want the story to be deviated away a bit from the whole, you know, rescuing something, I guess. Because um, I feel like after a while it could get a little stale. But, um, yeah, definitely Waluigi and Wario to be incorporated in the story is definitely a big one that I have high hopes for. I think for me, since they did have a Luma in the movie, I wouldn't mind, like, Rosalina being an integral part of a Mario sequel. Like, you could still have Yoshi be a part of the plot if they're still going off of that post, uh, post credit scene where... You know, like, they could utilize some abilities, like, from Mario Galaxy, where Yoshi eats the, eats, like, certain fruit, and he, like, goes fast. I think that was the ability. It's been a while since I played Galaxy. But, yeah, you could still utilize Yoshi and, like, in space, and Mario could help out Rosalina and the universes that Peach was talking about in, then the first movie. So, I think, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a Rosalina-centric story for a sequel to this Look, there's a lot of different possibilities they could do with the sequel there's still a bunch of games that they haven't touched up on again like mario 2 um even like some of the sports games you know like mario baseball mario tennis mario mario party like again i don't think they did a reference to any of that fuck it bring in mario's time machine or mario is missing bro i don't give a fuck uh, no one ever played those games, but, like, you know, who cares? Um, just as a sequel, I do hope that we... I, I'm for sure I'm sure it's going to happen at some point where we will see Bowser Jr. or the Koopalings trying to help Bowser out again. Like, all it takes for Bowser to turn back to normal is he practically has to get hit. 
because we saw that even when Mario ate the mini mushroom, uh, Donkey Kong flicked him, and that caused him, you know, to lose the power up. So anything is possible for Bowser to break free. Um, again, uh, Rosalina Luma, the Luma was in the movie when he was captured when it was captured with Luigi. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to a Rosalina appearance and or a tease at least in the sequel. Um, it does feel kind of early for a Rosalina inclusion because I feel like that would be more later down the line. Again, like I wouldn't oppo- be opposed to seeing a little bit more on Peach's backstory because again, we don't really exactly know where she is from. We just we were just shown, oh yeah, she was a baby and she got to the Mushroom Kingdom somehow. But we don't know from where, we don't know how. For all we know, uh, she could come from a different galaxy, a different universe. We do not know. Uh, with Yoshi. Uh, my big question with Yoshi is, like, what would they do? And, like, would they remain him being voiced, like, using the same voice lines from the games? Or would they try to make him a character that talks? And I don't know how I would feel about that. Like, again, with Donkey Kong, like, I'm glad that they made him have a voice, have lines and everything. I don't know if I would like that with Yoshi, though, because Yoshi is more like of a pet. Uh, to Mario and Luigi, even though that motherfucker's been sacrificed many fucking times in the games, but who who cares? Who gives a damn? Right, Yoshi comes back all the time. Um, I just don't know how they would approach a sequel. Again, there's I'm sure there's a lot of possibilities. They're probably already thinking of it. The movie has been really freaking successful in the first three four days that it's been in theaters, and they're definitely gonna make more sequels. I think it's confirmed that it's officially the highest animated movie opening of all time so that's gonna you know make illumination go hmm we're, we're gonna have to continue this shit whether it's um just a spin-off or anything and um that's pretty much it i, I have to say like i can't wait for the sequel i know it's gonna be entertaining if it makes me laugh as much as this movie did i'm gonna have a blast it's more mario give it to me So I was going to ask Tanner, uh, do you mind if I add one little idea to Edgar's Baby Peach idea? Yeah, well, yeah, because I found that interesting. What do you have for us, Saikin? So, Edgar, you think it would be cool if, like, you, you know, like the Yoshi's Islands games? Like, what if they util- utilize that plot line, but just switch Mario for Peach? Oh, okay. May, may, I mean, maybe. Uh, that could be interesting. It just, I don't, like, the thing is, like, we kind of saw that the Yoshis originate from the Mushroom Kingdom, though, when they were doing the montage. So, again, I don't know. Like, we'll, we would have to see. Um, it would be kind of cool, you know, but it, we, we were shown that um, Peach was raised by the Toads and everything. And grew up to, you know, live in the Mushroom Kingdom. When she was ready, she became the princess. Oh, right. Again, I don't know if, like, there's an even another island with Yoshi's, you know, an actual Yoshi's island, or if they're just, you know, or if they're, they're just part of the Mushroom Kingdom. I do not know. But what? with the sequel. Gotcha. Yeah, a lot of people kind of staying on that, I came for a bit. A lot of people have theorized that this was not. Mario and Luigi's first time in the Mushroom Kingdom, so maybe they were there as kids, and then came back. I don't know. That that's kind of been thrown around a bit. Um, very interesting ideas. I just love how this movie embraces Mario. You know, because I feel like me talking on my channel, um, for so many years about these deep dive references to see like a movie filled with those is like really fulfilling and just kind of wow. Um, I'd love to see that type of care given to other type of Nintendo movie. So I think what they're going to do is... Is I think they're going to do a Zelda movie. I, I think that they're going to do that. That's going to do really well. Uh, I want that movie to be very epic. Kind of like Lord of the Rings to a, an extent. Make that movie longer. Probably two hours. Then I think if that does well... Or maybe in that movie they'll hint... Kind of towards the cinematic universe. Um, I think that is kind of the next... Big thing here for Nintendo. I mean, people love this movie. Forget what... People say on Rotten Tomatoes at 56%. Ignore that. Audience scores like a 96%. This movie's awesome, as we all said. Um, 
I think if I remember correctly, like, Team, I think you have some ideas about the Nintendo Cinematic Universe. So if you want to go ahead and say kind of your thoughts on what they could do next. So if they want to, like, utilize movie versions of these characters, I had an idea where, you know, like, maybe maybe Peach knows of a Hyrule Kingdom since, you know, they... It established in this world you know you have different people running places like you know like the kongs have their king the mushroom kingdom has their princess and maybe there's other kingdoms that they know of like hyrule like it, it could be an interesting idea they could explore nintendo wants their own cinematic universe and then you got the space stuff like rosalina metroid Star Fox, and then you have like your you know like your uh like your RPG style type of uh, type of games, like uh, Xenoblade and uh, and uh, uh, and Zelda and Fire Emblem, where they all know each other. I'm exclu because again, this is m exclusively to like Nintendo stuff. I wouldn't inc not like Smash Bros, where they can get the rights for something like a video game, since movies and video games are different in terms of rights. So I'm just strictly sticking to just nintendo stuff if they did have to push the envelope i say maybe movie sonic at best and that's pretty much it because i couldn't really see like any other type of third party characters in movie form like street fighter or uh, mega man or pac-man or people like that I, like at least for me i couldn't see i can see how that would work out smoothly but strictly nintendo stuff and they can get like all the universes to connect with each other, that would be cool. So, like maybe in a future Metroid movie, uh, it, like maybe maybe Samus and Star Fox could team up to stop Ridley. And I mean, it's it's just a thought. There's just a lot of things you can do with a movie, to you know, just to have fun with it. That's an idea that I had. And then, um, wait, Edgar, Edgar, unmute for a sec. Didn't you say something about like a time machine, Mario time machine? Yeah, that that was a f educational ass game back then. That I'm pretty sure kids were fucking upset when they found they saw. Oh man, a new Mario game! I can't wait to. I <laughs> can <laughs> <laughs> open up the box and playing the game, and all it is is a fucking educational game about the past and like the real world. Like, man, ain't nobody want this shit. Come on now. So logically, like different Nintendo games would take place in different points in time, right? So they could probably utilize that Mario time machine to to probably explore other worlds like uh, Fire Emblem, which probably does take place during a medieval time. And just throwing ideas out there. I'm saying there's a lot of ideas they can do to put Nintendo icons, even ones that never shined on the consoles, shine on movies, and then get video games. You never know. Like Kind of like what Fire Emblem did for Smash Bros. Melee. Or how Guardians of the Galaxy did for Marvel. It's like, you know, you, you can you can just brainstorm and have fun, but still make it, I guess, make movie logic sense, I guess. So those are some of the ideas I had, like Peach knowing High, uh, Hyrule uh, and knowing a bit of the Legend of Zelda and, you know, like all the all the space stuff like Metroid and Rosalina and Star Fox. So, you know, you just got to think about which areas fit where and where could they intertwine at some point if that makes sense what do you guys think about it somebody can go first mario egger both let's see what y'all feel what y'all feeling like in terms of like how they would connect like every universe is that what you're trying to ask yeah i mean it's it, again it's, just, it's weird because like imagine like here's the thing like if they were for some reason to do, I'm still like stuck up on the fact that Mario was playing fucking Kid Icarus on the fucking Nintendo. So like, cause in that universe it's a game, but like, so if they go through the pipe and then Kid Icarus and Pit still exists, like, so like, how the fuck? Like, that's what boggles my mind a little bit. I'm not saying like it, it wouldn't work. I'm saying that it, it it'd be kind of hard to like tie in everything Nintendo related. Like we just got this Mario movie out of who for out of ever since for who knows how long, and 
we're, again, it's, it's the fun part. We're all trying to theorize, you know, like, oh, how could everything else connect, you know? Like, we got to start thinking, like, how are they going to connect, you know, Pokemon, for example? How are they going to connect Kirby, you know, Star Fox? All? I mean, again, with the space stuff, Star Fox Metroid, that's cool. But, like, will it all be animated is also another thing, you know? Like, will, you know, a, a, an animated Metroid movie do good? Will an animated Legend... I'm pretty sure a Legend of Zelda animated movie would do great. Uh, for the people that actually are huge fans of The Legend of Zelda. And, again, uh, Detective Pikachu was a thing. Uh, if they ever plan to bring that back for some reason, they could connect that into it somehow. Um, there's just so many Nintendo properties that you have to think, like, how they would do it. I wouldn't be opposed to it. You know, I think it'd be cool and lead up to a good uh, Smash uh, type thing where, you know, they're all, you know, put up against each other and then there's a big stake all the all the franchises or you know the different everything that that whenever their uh team loses like for example like let's say the legend of zelda team loses to the mario bros team you know like they get eliminated they cease to exist like that could be and that'd be dark as fuck like hey like what? yeah you, like on some anime type shit <laughs> yeah like hey guess what like if you all get eliminated you, you all cease to exist but then in the end like we all see that they get transported like you know like in brawl to like the great maze or something like that and they all have to like save each other and you know defeat what is the, like you know god in their fucking universe like fucking master hand or whatever like, i don't know there's a lot that could happen and i'd be interested as long as you know they don't as long as they don't like mess up and they don't like redcon a bunch of their stuff and everything like because, again, if they do something like that, then they have to, you know, like, power scale. Or, like, you know, oh, which character is stronger than which, you know? Like, it'd be a lot of, you know, research. But, like, I'm sure it'd be entertaining. Again, they probably we probably don't need to, like, focus on, like, the lore and, like, the take the, and like think about the seriousness. It, it's just going to be a Smash movie. It's going to be a, another Nintendo film that we're all trying to have fun to enjoy. So, like, like they should... You know, like they should definitely take their time with it and not rush into it. It's like what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it's not going to do good right off the bat. Like, you know, they have planning process and all that. Like, we're not going to get 10 fucking Nintendo movies in a freaking year, you know? Oh, here's a Pokemon movie. Here's a, another Mario movie. Here's a Donkey Kong movie. Here's a, here's a Wario and Luigi, well, Luigi spinoff. Like, like, they don't want to shoot themselves in the foot like what Marvel does. Yeah, pretty much. I think one thing that could work well for Nintendo Cinematic Universe is to have a lot of shows. I think a show like Kirby. Kirby's cool. People like Kirby. He's cute. Would a movie of Kirby do really well? I don't know, but a show would be great. How like 25-minute episodes of a Kirby show. Like 12 episodes a season, that would be awesome. I think a Fire Emblem show kind of like pg game of thrones i think would be really cool i think like legend of zelda metroid star fox could have some great movies um two points i want to touch on from y'all akeem i love the idea how you have like crossing over like maybe you have a star fox metroid crossover movie where they have defeat ridley maybe ridley and wolf teamed up i love that i think that's really cool do crossovers before the big smash event and I love the idea you had, Edgar, about the Smash Bros, like the different teams um, fighting each other. I never really considered that, but that would bring in that element, but also kind of do, you know, bring like that epicness. I really like that idea. I kind of think the main thing people have is, or my question is like, do you all trust Illumination to do this, like to go this epic? Because it kind of seems like in the movies, they like Despicable Me 1 was kind of, more grounded in a in a sense and then they kind of got more goofier as the series went on but i feel like if nintendo's there maybe they'll be able to have like a good grasp on them um someone can jump in uh mario i don't you haven't said anything on this yet do you want to kind of where, where you at with this um yeah um i don't know if, if we're talking illumination here i guess based on their track record i don't i'm gonna be honest i don't think they would um they would have it would be the best at handling this i mean because illumination isn't really well known for their 
heavy lore in their movies or or something of that nature um but maybe maybe th- there i think there's some hope if nintendo's looking over all of this uh, i mean i don't think there's been a uh well yeah yeah i think as long as nintendo's looking over it it could it could be uh possible but i don't know i think personally i think maybe it's a slim chance if illuminations also has a decent role in producing these movies yeah, I'd say for me, it like as far as Illumination movies go, uh, like like Mario said, they they don't make the best animated movies, but they don't make like the absolute worst. At least not all the time. I could say that about maybe two or three of their movies that they made. But I mean, compared to like rights, at least Nintendo, you know, at least Nintendo actually owns all the rights that they have instead of. I mean, I know I've been using Marvel comparisons a lot, but like, you know, Marvel sold off this, this and that. But if Nintendo strictly sticks with at least one company that they know they worked on this Mario uh, movie, then I feel that if they make a contract, say you're allowed to do this, you're allowed to do that, know the rules, then and, and Illumination plays by those rules and decide to make a Nintendo Cinematic Universe I think they could probably pull it off just as long as everything goes smoothly. Yeah, I think the main thing is um, Nintendo really has to be in control. and But that could be really cool. Like an F-Zero movie would be great. Alrighty, um, to wrap this up, we're going to do the classic movie scores out of 10. So for me... When I first saw this movie, I was between an 8 and a 9. And after seeing it again, I'm going to go 9. I I really think that the references and stuff were great. But, additionally, the characters were awesome too. They were well realized. They had great emotional moments. That moment when Mario is like beaten down by Bowser. And he like sees him and Luigi um, on like the TV. That kind of got me emotional. And... The action's great here. Like, the Mario Kart sequence is awesome. The scene with Mario and DK defeating Bowser's army is awesome. The action is great. The score's great. Animation. Really, everything that, is, that a movie needs to be this one is. And it's just so fun. It feels like you're playing the games. So I'm going to go 9 out of 10 for me. I liked it way more on second viewing. Um, Akeem, how about you? For me, definitely a 9 also. Just the... Just, uh... I guess maybe the one point for the cutout for uh, DK Country Music. And like I said, um, if you go in not knowing who Mario is, you may find that some of the characters bond a little too quickly or don't have the right emotion too quickly. But like I said, that's very unlikely that you don't know who Mario is going into this movie. Unless you're like super freaking young. So yeah, it's a nine for me, dog. How about you, Mario? Um, personally, I'm a I'm gonna go a little bit high up for the stars and go for a ten. Um, I don't know. Is this just my bias? Maybe because my name's also Mario. Maybe that's also why. But um, uh, I came in expecting a uh, I guess a light story just because I've played uh many different Mario games and I mean I got what I what I expected. What I what I um what I was expecting for a Mario movie. I got a simple plot. Um, which I don't think is a bad thing considering it's a Mario movie and uh great visuals, um funny jokes and just all around a lot of fan service. A lot probably one of the most fan service I've seen for a movie. Um so yeah, I I really couldn't find any flaws with it. I thought um for a Mario movie it it, it did really well, I thought. Yeah. Uh, finally, yeah, same with me, all the references, all the uh, nostalgia, even some non-Mario related references, like, for me, this is an easy 9.5 out of 10, I was thinking maybe like an 8.5 and 9, but after, you know, going back and, you know, just thinking about everything that happened, uh, only problem I had with it was the pacing, but other than that, movie is great, movie was fun, had me smiling the whole time, like, I wouldn't, uh, hate on the movie for anything. Chris Pratt was great as Mario. Charlie Day. All performances were really good. 
I feel like they did a good job with the cast, and uh, I can't wait to see what Illumination and Nintendo have in store for us if they decide to make an NCU, and hopefully we get more Donkey Kong and uh, Luigi's Mansion type of show or movie in the future. Yeah, well, thank you all for joining me. Just the fact that we saw the Mario movie, like, years after um, playing the games and talking about it is awesome. Uh, I know you all have some uh, channels in different platforms you guys make content on, so if you want to plug that real quick, uh, go ahead. 